our COVID hope line in the Diocese of Caloocan, I've noticed the great interest that our past two psycho-spiritual seminars have generated on the mental health issues that people are dealing with in the context of the pandemic. Today's first reading is about the mental health issue that the prophet Elijah himself had to deal with and how his spirituality played a big role in his healing. Just a quick background to the passage that we read from 1 Kings chapter 19. We're told that Elijah had traveled for 40 days in the desert. He had to go into hiding because he was being pursued by a tyrant king who had ordered the massacre of all the prophets of Israel. And there was no one left but Elijah. He was tired and hungry and feeling dejected and very depressed. He wanted to reach God's holy mountain but did not feel that he had any strength left to endure the journey. And so, he wanted to die. He prayed to God. He asked God in his prayer to take him, to let him fall asleep and not be awakened anymore. You know, I've heard of people describing the death wishes that accompany their problematic mental state that way. But we are told that the Lord sent Elijah an angel to wake him up, to feed him so that he could regain his strength and carry on with his journey until he was able to reach the mountain of the Lord. Thank God for such angels who are there for us just when we're about to give up. On Mount Horeb, Elijah focused himself in order to be able to hear the voice. Yesterday, we also heard about the voice. There were too many other voices competing for his attention. First, there was a storm, and then there was an earthquake, and then there was a big fire. But he did not hear the Lord in any of them. Where are you, Lord? His heart probably cried out, and the Lord finally answered Elijah, with a soft and gentle breeze and he made his presence felt. The breeze prepared Elijah to hear the voice of God. The voice is all that a prophet lives for because he is a mouthpiece of God. He has nothing to say if he does not listen to the voice of God. It took Elijah a lot of focusing to be able to hear it. And after he heard the gentle breeze, he poured out his heart to God and expressed a lament. He said, Lord, I used to have fire burning in my heart. Now, I feel like a smoldering wick flickering about to burn out. Brothers and sisters, fellow Filipinos, today is our 122nd Independence Day celebration. It is the 122nd year that we have been singing the Lupang Hinirang with the right hands pressed on our chests like that. I wonder if you still feel some fire when you sing the part that says, Alab ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. We sing the song precisely to keep that fire of our shared sense of nationhood still burning in our hearts. But don't you sometimes feel that the zeal with which we sing this line gets weaker and weaker? Like the prophet Elijah, don't we sometimes feel like we're burning out and that we are unable to do anything except to express a lament. Yung parang walang magawa kundi ang magsumbong na lang sa Diyos. 
Yesterday, I felt my heart breaking as I read the story of Michelle Silvertino in the papers. She was a housemaid who thought that she could already travel to her hometown in Camarines after Metro Manila was downgraded, downgraded to a GCQ. Her employer had brought her to the bus station, but there was no bus that would bring her to Bicol. And so eager was she to see her three children in the province, she waited and waited. And then she walked from Cubao to Pasay, hoping against hope she could get a bus. She waited under a footbridge until she was noticed by the barangay hall, the barangay people that picked her up. But when they noticed that she was starting to manifest some COVID symptoms, they probably felt afraid. You know what they did? They brought her back to the footbridge. And there she stayed. And there she was found again by someone else, already in the throes of death. And unfortunately, she did not make it to the hospital anymore. And the money that she had with her was missing. She was buried in Pasay, and her family was informed about her death. And the only request of her children is to have her exhumed and cremated. Now they're asking for just one little favor. If they could at least allow her ashes to be reunited with her orphaned children. And take note, Michelle was a solo parent. You know, honestly, this woman reminded me of Sisa, that fictional character of Jose Rizal in Noli Me Tangere, the woman who lost her sanity because of her desperate longing to be reunited with her children, Crispin and Basilio. But this is surely not what we want to happen to our beloved country, whom we love to call Luz Viminda, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. We would surely not want her, this motherland, to be treated as a slave all over again, do we? Would we allow her to be suffocated by a disease under a footbridge away from her children and only to end up as a handful of ashes in an urn? In today's gospel, Jesus makes a ridiculous statement about blocking one's eye or cutting off one's hand or one's foot if it causes you to sin. Well, it is better understood as a rhetorical question. He actually makes it deliberately sound ridiculous like, should you blame it on your hand if you were caught stealing? Yung sasabihin ko sa kamay ko, galit ako sa iyo kasi magdanakaw ka. Isn't that ridiculous? And then you say, puputuli na kita. Because you caused me to sin, can my hand or my eye or my foot or any part of my body cause me to sin? Wala namang sariling isip yan. Could Jesus have intended this gospel for people who are eager to cut off, cut off those parts of the body? that they consider a liability, cut off those parts that they think are useless or good for nothing. I remember the story of a man who went to a doctor to consult about the wound that was festering on his foot. Apparently, the doctor, you know what he did? He hit the foot with a stick, and the patient, he cried in pain. And he said, Doc naman, I came here for a cure to my, for my wound. What did you hit me for? The doctor said, Good news, sir. We're not going to cut it off yet because 
you can still feel it. Pain is generally an unpleasant experience, no doubt. But it is also a blessing. It is a signal that the body needs healing or some intervention in order to get well. What is worse is when we just cannot feel pain anymore. In Tagalog, we have a saying, Ang sakit daw ng kalingkingan, ramdam ng buong katawan. That saying is not always true, you know. The body could be in such a serious state of disease that it no longer feels the pain of the other parts. It is when we become totally indifferent, totally unaffected by what affects our country, that we will truly find ourselves in deep trouble as a nation. When we do not value anymore our freedom and democracy, which were bought by our ancestors and heroes at a huge price, when we no longer even remember history and the blood, sweat, and tears shed by the generations of Filipinos before us, when we allow our institutions to be weakened by tyranny, when we let them fall apart and break into pieces and go down the drain, that is when we forfeit the future of the next generation of Filipinos. Let me now end with a few lines from a poem by Andres Bonifacio. Ang sabi niya, walang mahalagang hindi inihandog ng may pusong wagas sa bayang nagkupko. Dugo, yaman, dunong, katiis at pagod. Buhay may abuting, magkalagot-lagot. Ipagkahandog-handog ang buong pag-ibig hanggang sa ang dugoy ubusing itigis kung sa pagtatanggol Buhay ay kapalit, ito'y kapalaran at tunay na langit.